demons. I hope it's that demon. Oh yeah, it's the demon. It's Osman. It's the son of Satan. All right, you there? Hello, yeah. Yeah, don't be screaming or you're going to get blocked. Hello? Oh, yeah. I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. But don't be screaming and shouting because I'm going to block you. So what's up? Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask you about, like, Paul. He goes against the Old Testament. No, hold on, my friend. That's the Listen. Oh, don't let me embarrass what? you. Is the topic Paul or is it about Allah, your God? It's about Christianity. No, it's like, not. It's the top, let me repeat it again. I know you're illiterate like Muhammad. Listen to me. I said I want to hang up on you. You're going to bark. Listen. Is the topic <clears throat> yeah. Paul or is it Allah, your God? It's about Allah. Okay, so why are you trying to change the subject like a coward to Paul who buries Muhammad under his feet? Why don't you stick to the topic? You went to the Old Testament, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show your God. Allah is Satan, the father of Muhammad, according to the Old Testament. Because you went to the Old Testament, right? Yeah, okay, sure. according yeah. to your Quran, yeah. listen, Surah yeah. Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 18, says the Jews and the Christians are not the sons of Allah. That's number one. Chapter 19 of the Quran, Surah al maryam pay attention. You're not going to change the topic yeah. like a coward. Chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 88 to 93, chapter 19, Surah al maryam verses 88 to 93, it says that you are a slave and Allah is your Lord, no more, no less. The Old Testament that you're referring to in Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. I want you to listen now. You better answer because yeah. you brought up the Old Testament. So you better not run from the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy okay. 14, verse 1, it says, The Israelites, Bani Israel, are the sons of God. Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 6, this is the Old Testament that you're appealing to. Deuteronomy 32, yeah. 6, it says, The God of Moses gave birth begot the Israelites to be his sons and daughters. And then in Exodus 4.22, God says, Israel's my firstborn son. Your Allah in the Quran says, no one is his son. The Jews are not his sons. But the Old Testament says, Israel is the son of God. God gave birth to the Israelites to be his sons and daughters. That means the Old Testament shows that your God, Allah, is a fake. What do you say to that? Well, what I would say is the Old Old Testament is because the Old Testament brought up confusion. That's why you oh, say. But wait, hold on. The child, child of Egan, God. Egan, hold yeah, on. Jesus is the son Egan, of God. listen, so what does that mean? listen. Yeah. Didn't you just say Paul contradicts the Old Testament, and now you just said the Old Testament brings up confusion because it shows that Muhammad is the son of the devil. So how is Jesus the son? Like, what does it don't mean? change Jesus the subject. The Answer the question. And, and by the, the way, Israelites are the sons of God. Don't change the subject. Do you agree the Israelites are the sons of God, which your Quran says they are not? Do you accept the Old Testament that Israel's the sons of God? That was a statement. That, that was like. A, Do you accept it? This, the word sons. Do you? You're not an, answering me. Do you accept it? Yeah. The Quran contradicts. I contradicts, say it. The Quran contradicts yeah. it. Hey, beholder guard, stone licking pagan. Why aren't you calling me on Skype, beholder guard? This guy, by the way, he lives in Greece. He's a Mohammedan, an Egyptian. He's one of these dogs of Allah who doesn't have the guts to debate me. He's now haunting my Facebook channel. I've been begging this stone licking pagan to defend his prophet who raped women like his mother and treated them like prostitutes, calling it muta. Behold the clown. You better call me on Skype now so I can end your career like Jesus ended Muhammad's life. You better call me. Behold the stone licking clown. You got less than 10 minutes. But anyway, coming back to you. You agree then the Quran contradicts the Old Testament, right? It took away the term sons okay. because the sons can use, be used. So what was your problem way? with Paul? Because you said Paul goes against the Old Testament and you just admit the Quran goes against the Old Testament. So what's your problem? Well, Jesus in the Bible said, "I'm not here to change any anything in the uh, in the Old Testament." And you know I'm that you just proved the Quran is a lie, right? Moses. You just again yeah. proved your Quran is a lie because in chapter three of the Quran, verse fifty, Surah Al Imran, it says that Jesus confirmed the Torah and made lawful halal what was haram. So if you're saying my Bible says Jesus didn't change the Torah then your prophet Muhammad is a liar because your prophet said Jesus came and changed many things because he made many things lawful that was haram. 
So are you saying the Quran is a lie and your prophet is a liar? I'm not here to... Uh, no, 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 Islam you are here. No, no, you're here to defend Allah. Islam doesn't make Christianity the true you, religion. You like, are here to defend Allah. Do you agree now Muhammad is a lying son of Satan because he said Jesus came to change things that were forbidden, but you just said my Bible said Jesus didn't change anything. So there, was Muhammad a liar? Was he lying? Uh, he wasn't lying. No. So then why are you quoting my Muhammad Bible, which contradicts the Quran, showing that Muhammad is a liar? Why are you quoting it? I'm just saying, don't you get... Uh, you're saying nothing. Following this Bible? No, you have, you're saying nothing because like, you don't like know those... my Bible. You don't even know your Quran. But I'm going to give you a final example from the Old Testament. Final one, then I'm going to have to send you on your merry way. One more I'm going to give you. In Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 to 4, Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 to 4, this is what it says. Pay attention. It says, if a man divorces a woman and she marries someone else and that second husband dies or divorces her, the first husband cannot take her back. He cannot marry her again because this is something disgusting to God. But in your Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 230, it says, when a man divorces a woman, he cannot take her back until she marries another man and he divorces her. That's why in Islam, that man is called Muhallal. The one who makes the woman lawful to go back to her husband. So Durrani says, this is disgusting. This is filthy. This is wicked. What your God Allah said a man can do. So now do you again say Muhammad is disgusting and your God Allah is disgusting for doing something that the Old Testament says is disgusting to do? Well, do you condemn Paul for uh, changing all the moral he, laws, Don't change like, the subject. Do you condemn moral, Muhammad? I'll answer your question. The... I'll answer your question. Do you first them say yes muhammad is the son of satan because the old testament shows he's wicked and allah is, this, is the devil yes or no he doesn't no islam is more like judaism than christianity i just gave you so judaism old difference. testament you're not listening again old testament god yeah. said if a man divorces a woman she marries and that second husband divorces her or dies she can't go back to your the first husband but your allah said in chapter 2 of the quran surat al-baqarah 2 230 it says that if i divorce a woman I can't take her back until she marries someone and that someone sleeps with her and divorces her. So the Quran says that the only way I can take my wife back if she marries and divorces and the God of Moses, the Old Testament Judaism says that's disgusting. So it says your God is disgusting and Muhammad is disgusting. So do you agree Muhammad is disgusting? He's the son of the devil. No, that's... So then stop using my Old Testament. Bye-bye. Now behold the stone-licking clown. If... You are a man and you have honor and you believe Allah is God and Muhammad is a messenger and not a son of Satan. Behold the stone licking clown. Call me right now so I can embarrass you and your career like Jesus ended the life of Muhammad, that son of the devil, showing you how Muhammad raped women like your mother, treated them like whores like your mother, calling it muta. Be a man. Call. So I can use the very Bible to destroy your God and prophet. Glory to Jesus. Is this Behold the Stone Licking Clown? You're going to call Behold the Stone Licking Clown like your filthy pagan prophet who licked the stone? This guy thinks he's a monotheist when his prophet used to lick a stone, smooch it. Oh, stone. All right, are you going to call? Okay, guys, block him if he doesn't respond. Be a man. If Allah is God, Imam is a messenger, step up. Put me in my place. But you know you can't because your prophet is wicked, son of the devil, and you're a filthy coward living in Greece. And by the way, since you're in Greece, do you condone that they took Hagia Sophia and turned it into a mosque? I want you to say it. Behold the stone-licking clown because we have your Facebook page. I want you to say to the Greeks here, Yes, I am happy that they took Hagia Sophia and turned it into a mosque. Come on, let's see if you're a man, you wicked, filthy jihadi. Prove to us you're a man. Let's say it. Or I'm going to muzzle you like Jesus muzzled your prophet and damned him to the pit of hell. Say it. Okay, send this guy out of here, this filthy dog. You're worse than your prophet. Both of you are dogs. Get him out of here. He's not a man. He can't do it. Pagan. Scum. Anyway, guys, you guys, you see how quick it is to destroy their arguments? Did you guys enjoy that? Did you guys enjoy that lesson?
Everyone with me? Did you learn how to turn their arguments against them and destroy their religion? This is why they hate us. This is why they can't stand us. And if they have their way, they will murder us. That's why you Christians who love Jesus and love us for the sake of Jesus, not you sissified, effeminate, spineless cowards who think you're Christians and attack us. We need your prayers. Pray God will make us bold as lions. Never back down. Never deny Jesus. Never blaspheme Jesus. Be willing to die for Jesus because we don't fear their threats. They are nothing but dogs until they repent. And our lives are in the hands of Jesus. Anyway, I hope that was blessing for you guys so far. Okay. Here's the other problem with the Islamic concept of Allah. Are we ready for the other problem? Okay, here's the other problem. In Islam, Allah is not a generic noun, a common noun. It's a proper name. Now, let me explain the difference. A generic noun, a common noun, is a noun that can be used for multiple individuals. A proper name is unique to an individual. For example, man. That is a common noun, a generic noun. I'm a man, Jai's a man. But Sam, that's a proper name. That's a proper name, right? Not everyone's named Sam. So every human being is a man, human, but not every human being is called Sam. So we make a distinction mm -hmm. between personal names, proper nouns, generic nouns, common nouns. Okay? Now, unfortunately, in Islam, Allah is a proper noun. It is the name of the deity. That's his name. That's his name. So if you ask Muslims, what is the name of Allah? They'll say he has many names, but the greatest name is Allah. That's why even in the Shahada, when they say, La ilaha illallah. Notice, there is no ilah except Allah. See, Allah there is not an, a generic noun. It's a name. So who is ilah? Who is God? Allah is. So in Islamic theology, Allah is the proper name of the ilah. Please follow with me, and I hope I'm not confusing you guys. Let me again repeat. Ilah is the Arabic word for God, the generic noun, the common noun for God. It's ilah. So what's the generic noun for God in Arabic? Ilah. So when they say there is no ilah, except Allah, Allah is no longer a generic noun. It's the name. So which ilah is ilah? Who is the ilah that exists? Allah is the only ilah. You see the difference now? So Allah now becomes the name of the ilah, the name of the God. So if you ask them, who is the only ilah? What is the name of that ilah? They'll say Allah. See, Allah is not a generic noun. Now right away, that introduces problems. Right away, that introduces problems. Do you know why? In the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, God's personal covenantal name is not Elohim. It's not Il. It's not Eloh. His personal name, the name that distinguishes him from all other gods, the name that belongs only to him is yod He. Vav He, which can be pronounced Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahovah. Anglicized form, it's Jehovah. So the God of the Old Testament, his proper name is not Elohim. Elohim is used for many. It's not Il. There are many Il's. It's not Eloh. It's not Adon, Lord. That's used for many. It's yod He vav He. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahovah, Jehovah. So if you ask the Israelites, who is the only true Elohim? What is his name? yod He vav He. Who is the only tr true Il? What is his name? yod He vav He. Who is the only tr true Eloh? Eloh. yod He vav He. Right? So right there you have a problem. Whereas in the Old Testament, the personal covenant name of the God of Abraham is Jehovah. The personal 
proper name of the Muslim God is Allah. Right there, you have a problem. You get it? Right there, you have a problem. So that's the further problem. The Allah of the Quran cannot be the true God of the Bible. So do I have a problem with using Allah for the God of the Bible? No. But there is a problem when communicating with Muslims because to them, Allah is the name of the God of the Quran. So then you have to clarify. Hold on. The, the name of the true God in the Old Testament is not Elohim. It's not Eloh. It's not Eir. It's Yahweh. Yahweh Jehovah. But you're telling me that the personal name of the God of Muhammad is Allah. Right there, you're proving that the Allah of the Quran is not the Allah of the Bible. So though I may use the word Allah for the God of the Bible, he's not your God because his proper name is not Allah. Okay? So that's the problem. The Old Testament God, his proper name is Yahweh. Yahweh, Jehovah. The God of the Quran, his proper name is Allah. Allah. Okay. But wait, it's going to get even more problematic. Are you ready now? You sure you guys want me in or am I boring you? Should I shut it down? Was this too much? Should I wrap things up or do you want me to continue? Because it's your time. I don't want to torture you guys with all this stuff. Because now there's a problem with the New Testament. Here's the problem. In the Old Testament, the covenant name of God appears... Approximately 7,000 times. You can double check on Sheikh Gogol. yod Hey vav Hey, Pronounced Yahweh by some, Yahweh by others, Yahovah. And it's the anglicized form is Jehovah. Appears about 7,000 times. Okay. But in the New Testament, written in Greek, it does not appear a single time. Right? It does not appear... A single time in the New Testament. I just want to double check something. Yep, seven over 10,000 times. In the Greek New Testament, in the Greek New Testament, the name used in place of Jehovah, the name used in place of Jehovah is the Greek word Kyrios, which the Anglo-Saxon way is Kurios, Lord. Are you with me there? In the New Testament, inspired in Greek, the inspired authors never use the divine name Jehovah. What did they use instead? What did they use in place of it is Kyrios or Kurios, which is the word translated as Lord. Now, the Greek word kurios, kerios, can mean Lord, it can mean Sir, it can mean Master. But also, it's used as the synonym, the substitute for the name Jehovah. Yes, Ernst, in Judaism it is forbidden, not in Christianity. Everyone with me there? So if the New Testament rendered the divine name yod He vav He Yahovah as Kurios, Kyrios, Lord, that means the New Testament sets the precedence for using a synonym, a substitute for the divine name, meaning the New Testament inspired by this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit approves that we use another name in place of the divine name. An equivalent to the divine name. So that you can use Kyrios in Greek, Kurios, for Yahweh or Jehovah. But then in English, Kyrios, Kurios, is translated Lord. Uh, but now the Muslim is going to catch you. Here's the objection of the Muslim. Are you ready? Are you ready? No. The pronunciation of the word Y is not necessarily wrong, brother. Just don't get into that, okay? Just forget about it, okay? 
here's where they're going to catch you. They're going to they're going to say, hold on, Christian. And if you guys remember, I don't know if you remember, in my debate with Itisham Gulam, Itisham Gulam, he brought that up against me, and I said, stop attacking straw man. That's not my argument. I don't use it. I've actually corrected Christians who use it. If you go back, he says, one of the arguments that Christians use against Muhammad is that Muhammad never used the divine name, Yahweh. And then he said, well, none of the New Testament writers use the divine name. And I said, stop attacking straw men. That's not my argument. So don't make an argument or don't refute an argument I don't make and expect me to refute it. That's not my argument. So the Muslims have caught on. The Muslims are going to turn it against you. Wait, Christian, if you're saying Muhammad is not a prophet because Muhammad never used the word Yahweh, now reject your New Testament. Because the New Testament, the authors whom you believe inspired by the Spirit, never use the word Yahweh. Are they disqualified? Everyone with me? You paying attention or no? Or am I losing you guys? So then guess what the sharp Muslim will say to you? They'll say, okay, since the New Testament uses a synonym for Yahweh, for Jehovah, Kurias, Kirius, they're going to ask you, isn't the word Kurias, Kirius, translated as Lord? So isn't it clear from the New Testament you can use the word Lord in place of Jehovah as a substitute for Jehovah? And you're going to say yes, right? You're going to be honest to your scripture, honest to your God, yes. And they'll say, that's where we get you. Because guess what Allah is called in Arabic? Rab. Rab is the Arabic word for Lord. So the Arabic word Rab corresponds to Kirius, Kurias in Greek, which means Rab is the Arabic way of saying Jehovah. We got you, Christian. We got you. Booyah. Okay, you see their argument now? The Arabic word Rab means Lord. And they'll tell you Rab is the Arabic substitute for Jehovah. Just like Greek Kyrios, Kurios, Lord is the Greek substitute for Jehovah. Right? Catholic Crusader, what do you mean we're, we're here now? I don't get it. I would say Allah of the Quran. Allah of the Quran. Because not everyone believes the Quran was compiled by Muhammad. It's an editorial patchwork that took centuries to produce. Allah of the Quran. So does everyone understand their response to you? If you Christians admit that the word Lord can be used for Jehovah... What your English translations do, by the way. In your English translations, in the Old Testament, they use the word Lord in place of Jehovah. And the Greek uses Kyrios, Kurios, which is the word Lord, in place of Jehovah. Then why can't the Quran use Rab, meaning Lord, for Jehovah? Now, how do you respond to that? Are you ready? Are you ready now for the response to that? Are you ready? Are you now listening and pay attention now how to refute that? Say, yes, you're correct. That the Greek New Testament uses the word kurios, kirios, in place of the name Jehovah. But you forgot to add one thing. Here's what they forgot, and you forgetting too. According to the New Testament, that Jehovah has a new personal name. Are you ready? All throughout the Quran, Jojo. All throughout the Quran, he's called al -Rab, Rab. His name is Jesus Christ. The New Testament says that Jehovah has now adopted a new personal name, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Pedro, come on, man. I've been teaching this for the past several months. I did a session on this. Can I show it to you? Romans 10, verses 9 to 13. 
So Jehovah of the Old Testament becomes Jesus Christ of the New Testament. Don't you know that when you say Lord Jesus Christ, don't you know you're actually saying Jehovah Jesus Christ? Here, read with me. Here. You guys want to learn? Try to pull back on texting so you can read the verses. Here it is. Read the verses. Romans 10, verses 9 to 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So if you confess verbally the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord in what sense? Pay attention. The Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Pay attention now. Salvation. Okay, now verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So all who call upon the Lord Jesus. Now notice the verse. Verse 13. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul just quoted Joel chapter 2, verse 32. In Joel chapter 2, verse 32, it says, whoever calls on the name of Jehovah shall be saved. But then Paul applied it to calling on Jesus as Jehovah. So when you call on Jesus and confess he is Jehovah, you'll be saved. So when you say, Lord Jesus, Paul is saying that what you're actually saying is Jehovah Jesus. Jesus is Jehovah. No, Habakkuk. Habakkuk, I should block you for that. You know that, right? Everyone with me there? Why do you think in the New Testament the term Lord is used for Jesus primarily and only in a few places it's used for the Father and the Holy Spirit? Whereas the term God is used primarily for the Father and only in a few places is used for Jesus. You ever wonder why that is? Okay. Have you ever wondered why in the New Testament the Father is primarily called God, rarely called Lord, whereas Jesus is primarily called Lord, rarely called God? Because that's Paul's way and the New Testament way of distinguishing two divine persons, both of whom are God. See, if the Father is God, then he is Jehovah. And if Jesus is Jehovah, then he's the true God. So they use two different divine names for two different divine persons to show they're not the same person, though they're the same God. No one of many. That's not a good argument. Just put the I am statements aside for now. Just be patient. Are you with me there? Are you getting this point? Have you ever thought about it? No, Appy, it's not going to go over your head if you focus and i'm going to get to philippians 2 in a minute just be patient guys be patient as i walk you through this why do you think i'm going slow have you ever wondered why the word god in the new testament is used primarily for the father rarely for the son and have you ever wondered why the word lord is used primarily for jesus rarely for the father That doesn't mean the Father can't be called Lord. He can. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit can't be called Lord. He can. That doesn't mean Jesus can't be called God. He can. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit can't be called God. He can. What it means is that the term God is used primarily for the Father, and the term Lord is used primarily for the Son to distinguish the Father from the Son, to show they're not the same person, even though both of them are the one true God, Jehovah. Elion, can you stop helping me, brother? Elion Jiang, I just said, the Holy Spirit is called Lord. Stop helping me, brother. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18. I just want to make sure everyone's getting it. No, Habakkuk, the oldest extent 
copies of the Greek, meaning those that are nearly complete codices, are after the time of Christ, and they don't transliterate the divine name. You have some fragments of the Old Testament in Greek produced around the time of Christ that do have the divine name in Greek letters, but that's, <clears throat> that's very rare. That's not common or widespread. And the extent Greek versions of the Old Testament that are nearly complete codices of the Old Testament are after the time of Christ, and they don't use the divine name. Stop bringing up too many issues where I have to go on tangents and then correct you guys for your misinformation. You're not helping me because I'm going to have to correct the misinformation. And I don't know if you think you're trying to impress me with your knowledge. You're not. You're actually angry because I take it as pride that you want to pontificate. See, look, I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. Look at me. I'm smart. I'm well read too, fam. Swallow the pride, dude, because when you bring up issues that I need to clarify, you take me off topic and then you prolong the session. Me, 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 me. Not necessarily preach Christ LA, no. Because when you say call on the name of God, what God? Call on the name of Jehovah. That's the name of the true God. That's the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, who is that Jehovah? Okay, now, for everyone else following with me, for everyone else following with me, okay, let me repeat again. In the New Testament, Jehovah has taken on a new identity. That doesn't mean the Father can't be called Jehovah or the Spirit can't be called Jehovah, meaning now the New Testament writers want all Christians to know Jesus is that Jehovah who became flesh. So now... Jehovah, that was the proper name of God in the Old Testament, has now taken on a personal identity as a man, and his name is Jesus Christ. Jennifer, Christos means Christ. What are you talking about? Christos means Christ. Okay, so everyone with me so far so I can unpack this and finish it? Because before I move on, okay, so the kurios, kurios of the New Testament is now known as Jesus Christ. Now known as Jesus Christ. Because in Romans 10, verse 9 and 13, who is the Lord Jehovah that you call on? Whose name do you call upon? Jehovah. But who is Jehovah? Romans 10, verse 9 and verse 13. Let's skip. Verses 10 to 12. Let's read Romans 10, verse 9 and 13 to see that the Jehovah that you call on, his name is Jesus Christ. Right here. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. No, Murat. Allah Akbar. Murat, maybe you need to leave, brother, because this is being too much for you. You're not getting it. Because I said the same thing three times and it's not sinking in. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. So who do you confess verbally with your mouth to be saved? The Lord Jesus. But then 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You now need to call on the name of the Lord to be saved. But who is the Lord that you call on and confess with your mouth to be saved? Jesus. But in Romans 10, 13, Romans 10, 13 that's quoting Joel 2.32. There it says, whoever calls on the name of Jehovah shall be saved. But Paul took that and said, the Jehovah whose name you call on is Jesus Christ. No, Matthew Wilkins, put down the pipe, son. Stop, stop talking because you're butchering Revelation 3.12. Do it again. I'm going to block you. I want everyone else to follow. Okay. Did you guys hear me say, now this is going to be the fourth time, even though the name Jehovah can be used for the Father and for the Spirit, in the New Testament, Jehovah is used primarily for the Son. I didn't say only for the Son, primarily for the Son. Even though it's used for the Father and the Spirit, Jehovah, the word Lord, is used primarily for the Son. Just like I said, 
the word God is used primarily for the Father, not only for the Father, because there are places it's used for the Son. So why is Murat asking me? I thought the word Jehovah was the name of the Godhead. Am I wrong? You're not listening, Murat. You're not, and you're disappointing me. You hear me there? Now let me give you an example so you guys follow with me. Okay. The name Adam is used primarily for who? The name Adam. Yes, preach Christ. Exactly. You see, preach Christ, Ella, you got it. Who is the God there that raised him? Their God is being used for, her, for who in Romans 10, 9? That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in her, God raised him from the dead. Who is God there? God raised Jesus. That's the Father, right? So notice, it doesn't say the Father. It simply calls him God. But the God that raised him there must be the Father. That's my point. So then who is the Lord? Jesus. Who is God? Father. Are you seeing it? Is it sinking in? Preach Christ, LA, LA you got it. Is sinking in? So who is Lord there? Jesus. Who is God that raised him? Father. This is how the New Testament works. The New Testament uses the name God primarily for the Father. Not only for the Father, but in the majority of instances, over 1,300 times, 99% of the use of God is for the Father. Whereas the word Lord, Lord, in the majority of instances, it's used for Jesus, rarely for the Father. Rarely for the Father, rarely for the Holy Spirit. Hillian, don't engage the Mohammedans here. Just focus. Guys, if you have Mohammedan distractions, send them out of here. Toma. No, Toma, you can't say Jesus is God. The Son is God. Toma, if you're not getting it, I'm probably going to block you. I just said Toma. Toma, I just said. The word God is used primarily, mainly for the Father, even though it can be used for the Son, but rarely. Timmy, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me talk to Timmy. One second, guys. Let me talk to Timmy. Hey, Timmy. This guy's having a hard time, but let me see if you get it. You know the word God in the New Testament, theos. It's primarily used for the Father. Primarily, you know what primarily means? It's used for the Father, but not always. But in the majority of instances, it's used for the Father. But that word God is also used for the Son in few places. So the majority of times, it's used for the Father, even though in some places, it's used for the Son. Did you get that, Timmy? Okay. So why is this guy asking me, can we call the Son God? Oh, you don't know either? Okay. Now, Timmy, the second point. The word Lord in the New Testament primarily primarily means not always or only. means in most instance, instances, the word Lord is used for Jesus. But there are a few instances it's used for the Father and the Holy Spirit. But in the majority of places, it's used for Jesus. So, Timmy, did you get what I didn't say? I didn't say God is never used for Jesus. Oh, you got that? Man, I love you. And I didn't say, Lord, can I ever be used for the Father? Naomi, I'm going to hook you up with Naomi. Okay, see, Timmy got it, guys. Timmy got it. He got it now. Anyone else getting it? I know Tony's feeling jealous. Well, I'll get to you, Tony. No hard feelings, homie. Come on, Karna. You're my primo. I'll get to you, but you're there in the room. I'm out here. Come on. I'll, get, I'll visit you. All right. All right. Did everyone get that point now? Yeah, he's he's confessing, Ariel. Did everyone get that point now? Do you, do you understand what I did not say? I did not say God is never used for Jesus. And I did not say Lord is never used for the Father. I did not say that. In the New Testament, the term God is used mostly for the Father. In the New Testament, the term Lord is used mostly for Jesus the Son. I know, Thomas. I feel like they need to take me away to Bellevue. Did everyone get it now? Everyone got that part? So I can move on to the next point? 
What's up, Karna? Yes, sir. All right, did everyone get it? Before I move on. Okay, let's see if you got it. All right. Let me give you an example. Let's see if it sinks in. Let me give you an example. Let's see if it sinks in. Okay. The word Adam, the word Adam is used primarily for who? The word Adam is used primarily for who? For who? When Paul speaks of Adam, who is he speaking about? The husband of Eve, right? The husband of Eve, right? Okay. Adam is used primarily for the husband of Eve, the first male. Okay, now here, let's go to Genesis 5 verse 2. Genesis 5 verse 2. Now let's see if you catch it. Genesis 5 verse 2. The first male, the husband of Eve. Genesis 5 verse 2. Now watch. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Male and female he created them. Male and female he called them Adam. So the male and female were called Adam. Right there, Genesis 5 verse 2. He named them, male and female, Adam. But then explain Genesis 4 verse 1. Genesis 4 verse 1. Genesis 4 verse 1. Okay, and Adam knew Eve, his wife. Okay, I'm confused. If Eve is Adam, how can Adam know Eve, his wife, and get her pregnant? And Adam knew his, his, Eve, his wife. He knew her and got her pregnant. But I thought she's Eve too. Okay, do you understand the point now? Even though the name Adam is used Primarily for the first male. And his wife is called Eve. Adam can also be applied to Eve. Even though it's used mostly for the male, it's also applied to Eve. But in most instances, it refers to the first male. Everyone get that? So just because the word Adam is used primarily for the first male, the husband of Eve doesn't mean it can't be used of Eve. Likewise, just because the word God is used primarily for the father in the New Testament doesn't mean it cannot be applied to the son. It is applied in few places. Likewise, just because the word Lord is used primarily for Jesus doesn't mean it's not used for the Father or the Holy Spirit in few instances. Everyone with me now? So, what am I trying to get, get at? Though the Father is Jehovah and can be called Jehovah, though the Holy Spirit is Jehovah and can be called Jehovah, the the revelation of the New Testament, the astonishing teaching of the New Testament is this. Father and Spirit want everyone now to identify Jesus as Jehovah so as to attach the name Jesus Christ to Jehovah. Father and Spirit want the world to recognize this Jesus is Jehovah. So when you think of Je Je Jehovah, always think of his name. That's the revelation of the New Testament. You with me there? Don't get distracted by these demons. See, you're talking about Farida. You should be focusing on your theology. Okay. What's the glorious, shocking revelation of the New Testament? This is the folk glorious, shocking revelation of the New Testament. Watch here. Father and Spirit, though they are Jehovah, their name is Jehovah, Want creation now to recognize and testify Jesus is Jehovah and want all creation 
to attach the name Jesus Christ to the name Jehovah. Juan Perez, I will never call your mother a human being. I will call your mother a dirty, filthy whore of the devil, a dog, and you're a filthy bastard of Satan. Okay, Juan Perez? That's what I want to call you. Yes, indicator veritatas. You got it. Indicator veritatas, I want to kiss your head. You got it. That's how you destroy Islam. Because the Rub of the Old Testament, the Kirius of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ, which the Quran denies. You got it, indicator veritatis. He got it. He got the point. That's where I was leading you to. He got the point. You get it now, indicator veritatis? You better believe it. When a guy says, I'll never confess Lord Jesus is Jehovah, that's more insulting to the glory of Jesus than I call your mother a dog. Who's worthy of greater honor, your mother or Jesus? And then you rob Jesus of his glory. You with me there? Do you understand where I'm going with this? Now let me break it down for all of you. The teaching of the New Testament is, yes, the word kirius, kurias, is the substitute, substitute synonym for the name Jehovah. Okay. But the New Testament says that Jehovah, that kirius, kurias, is now to be declared to be Worshipped as, glorified as, Jesus Christ. That's the New Testament message. Hey, when you think of Jehovah, when you think of Kirius, Kurias, you better think of Jesus and attach his name to the name Jehovah. That's the message of the New Testament. I don't know, champ. If your question is not relevant, then I'm going to have to silence you. That's the message of the New Testament. So the argument isn't that Muhammad did not use the name Jehovah. The argument is Muhammad denied the identity of Jehovah as Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which is the teaching of the New Testament. That's the message of the New Testament. In other words, the New Testament is revealing Father and the Spirit want creation to know when you say Jehovah, you better think Jesus and attach the name Jesus Christ to Jehovah. Now let me prove that to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Guys, you see someone mocking about gay and all that. Can you get rid of them? Are you ready for the proof? Okay, let's go. Isaiah 45, 23. I hope all of you learned here. I don't know if you did. Okay. Isaiah 45, 23. What a stupid argument, Omega Cube. Oh, my goodness. We got idiots born every day. Anyway, Isaiah 45, 23. Read with me. I have sworn by myself. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth. And righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Now, who's saying this? Who's saying the time will come, every knee will bow, and every tongue swear to me? Who's saying this? Every knee will bow to me, and every tongue. See, they said the Father. Tunda. Tunda, if you don't show me the word Father in that text, I'm going to block you. You know that, right? Okay, super chat. If you don't show me the word Father in Isaiah 45, I want to block every one of you. Anyone who says Father is getting blocked. Where do you see Father in Isaiah 45? So Super Chad and Tunda, you got a minute to show me it's the Father. Okay, let's read Isaiah 45, 21, 23. The level of biblical illiteracy is alarming. It's troubling. It stupefies me, man. 
Isaiah 45, no, it's not even the sun either. No. Isaiah 45, 21 to 23. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient times. Who hath told it from that time. Have not I the Lord? yod he vav he And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. 22 and 23. Look unto me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself and the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Let's try it again. Who is saying that the time will come where every knee will have to bow to me and every tongue will have to swear allegiance to me? Who's saying it? Who is speaking in the passage? Jehovah, thank you. Yod he vav he. Boneless, I don't care what they say about you too. Even though they say you're a dirty bum, I don't believe it for a minute. So who's saying every knee will bow to me and every tongue will confess to me? Jehovah. It doesn't say father. It doesn't say son. It doesn't say spirit. Okay. So let's try this again, Tunda and Super Chad. Who said every knee will bow to me and every tongue will swear to me? Who said that? Who said it? Jehovah, right? It's okay, Bonus. I'm supporting you too. I love you, brother. Not too much, but I love you. All right. Don't forget, it's not the Father. It's not the Son, not the Spirit. doesn't mention them. It just says Jehovah. So go with the text, Jehovah. Okay, now, let's go to Philippians 2, verse 9. Philippians 2, verse 9, and I got a few more points to wrap it up. This was a long session, wasn't it? Yeah, I might just wrap it up here. Philippians 2, verse 9, watch here. Wherefore, God also hath exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now, get ready to be blown away, guys. Get ready to be blessed. I already mentioned this in one of my previous sessions, but we're creatures repetition. We need to hear something over and over again. Get ready. Get ready. Here is the Revelation New Testament that shocked the world, that shocked the monotheistic Jews. Shocked them. Here it is. Philippians 2, 10 to 11. Watch and listen. Watch. Philippians 2, 10 to 11. Watch here. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Bam! There it is. God wants every creature to bow and acknowledge and recognize Jehovah is Jesus. Jesus is Jehovah. Every tongue must acknowledge you, Jesus, are that Jehovah. Jehovah is Jesus. Bam! There it is right there. Did you catch it now? Is it sinking in? Now I want it to sink in. So what Paul is telling you is the Father and the Spirit want every creature to recognize and believe Jesus is Jehovah so that when you think Jehovah, think Jesus. Jehovah, Jesus Christ. Jehovah, Christ. Because now Jehovah is known as Jesus Christ. And that's what the Father and the Spirit want every creature to realize, recognize, confess, believe, and trust in. No, Maron, I can't. Let me change subjects and go about the serpent. Yeah. Everyone with me there? Did you get it? I just want to take a minute, sink in, because we're going to have to end it here and wrap things up. So what's the point? 
Though the Father is Jehovah, the Spirit is Jehovah. Father and Spirit want every creature now to identify Jehovah with Jesus and identify Jesus as Jehovah. So the Father wants every creature to say, Jesus, you are Jehovah. So you attach Jehovah with the name Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean the Father can't be called Jehovah. That doesn't mean the Spirit can't be called Jehovah. Just like it doesn't mean Eve can't be called Adam. Even though her husband, his name was Adam, the first male. What it means is, though the Father is Jehovah, the Spirit is Jehovah, Father and Spirit delight in and desire that Jesus' name be attached and associated with the name Jehovah. So when you think Jehovah, you think Jesus. And so, how does this destroy Islam? Let's now, let me tie it in. Though the New Testament uses the word Lord as a synonym for the name Jehovah, the Greek word Lord is Kyrios, Kurios, and that's used as the synonym, substitute for Jehovah. And that word Kurios, Kyrios, corresponds to the Arabic word Rab. The Quran does not identify that Rab as Jesus. Therefore, the Rab of the Quran is a false Lord. The Allah of the Quran is a false God. The true Allah is the Father, Son, and Spirit. And the true Rab... The true Kyrios, 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 the true Jehovah is Jesus Christ, all of which the Quran disagrees. So the answer to the question, is Allah the true God? If you mean Allah of the Quran, he's a false God. If you mean the Rub of the Quran, false God. False Jesus of the Quran, false Mary of the Quran, false spirit. The only true Allah is the Allah of the Bible, who is the Father, Son, and Spirit. The only true Rub. The only true Kyrios, Kurios, the only true Jehovah is Jesus in union with the Father and the Spirit. That's the answer.